Today we're going to be talking about how to use Simpson's rule to find the centroid of the plane region. And in this particular problem, we've been given a table of values for x and f of x. So x from 0 to 8, and then their corresponding f of x values. And you could just as easily do the exact same problem if you were given a graph. So if you were given a graph like this on an xy coordinate plane, and you know you had the graph looking something like this and they asked you the same question to use Simpson's rule to find the centroid of the plane region all you would need to do they're probably going to give you the range but if they don't use the x-intercepts so here and here and call that your range so if this is 0 and this is 8 and then you know just figure out between here what the value is this is 1 right what the value is here on the graph at 1 what the value is at 2, what the value is at 3, etc. And just put those into your table and then you have a table of values that you can plug into your Simpson's rule approximation formula and you can start um, working your way toward your answer. So either from a graph like that you get the values and you make a table or they give you a table. Either way you want to use these values in your Simpson's rule approximation formula. So the first thing that we need to realize is that the centroid of the plane region is a coordinate point and we write it like this this xy coordinate point here and this formula here gives us and it looks more complicated than it is so bear with me for one second but this is the formula that's going to give us the x value in the coordinate point and then this is the formula that's going to give us the y value in the coordinate point there's really only three things we need to find and then we plug them into our coordinate point formula here. The first one is A, which is just plain old area under the curve. And we're going to find that with our Simpson's rule approximation. So we'll use this formula to find A and we can plug it in to our X value formula and the Y value formula. Then we're going to need to find the values of these integrals. Now one important thing to note here, sometimes you need to find the centroid of the plane region and your plane region is defined by two curves. Let's say you have a curve like this and you have a curve like that. And the plane region is the region bounded by the two curves. It's this region right here and you need to find the centroid. If that is the case, then you have two functions that you need to deal with. You have the upper function, the one that's on top basically, which is f of x, and then you have the one that's on the bottom, which is g of x, and you would plug those in here, f of x and g of x, and f of x and g of x, and you would take the integrals that way. So sometimes you have two curves and, and that's the case. Sometimes though, you only have one curve. You have an xy coordinate plane like this, and you have kind of what we drew before, where you have you know one curve like this. If you only have one curve, then your upper curve is f of x, and your lower curve, instead of being g of x, it is the x-axis. And because it's the x-axis, it's always equal to zero, and you don't need to define a g of x function. You basically just ignore these in your formula completely. So this part of your formula goes away, and you just deal with f of x. And that's the case that we have, because in fact, I got these values from a graph that looks like this, where we have it like this and just the x-axis, there was no lower curve. We're just estimating the values of f of x only. So we can go ahead and ignore the g of x parts of our formula. Otherwise, if you have two curves, make sure that you deal with g of x. So since we just have f of x, what we're gonna do is find a couple of values. Remember we talked about the first value of the three things we need to find being a, and we'll use our Simpson's rule approximation formula for that. The second thing we need to find is x times f of x, and we'll use our same Simpson's rule approximation to do that. So we'll use the same Simpson's rule approximation formula. We'll just multiply each one of these terms inside this sum by its corresponding x value, which we'll get from our table. And then the third thing we need to find is f of x squared times 1 half, and we'll use the Simpson's rule approximation formula for that as well. So let's go ahead and calculate these three things so we can see what it looks like. We'll start with the area because that's going to be, it's to find area, we're going to use Simpson's rule approximation in the standard way that it's always used. So that one's the easiest. So in our case, we have eight subintervals. From zero to eight, we have eight subintervals. So we're going to have n equal to eight. So we can call this s of eight if we want to. 
delta x is just going to be the change in x each time. So obviously you can see we go from 0 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3. That's a change of 1 each time. So our delta x will be 1, and then we'll have 3 out in front here. That's part of the Simpson's rule approximation formula. So we've got those things. Now we need to start plugging in the values inside of our Simpson's rule approximation formula. And if you're not super familiar with Simpson's rule, it's a lot easier than this formula makes it look. Basically, you're going to be adding a bunch of things together, and some of the things you're adding together, you're going to be multiplying by constant coefficients. You need to look at your f of x values here in your table or on your graph, however you have them, and you need to add together the first one and the last one, and those two won't be multiplied by anything. So our first f of x value is 0, and our last one is 0. So you're going to add those two together. They don't get multiplied by anything. That's easy. That's f of x sub 0 and f of x sub n, the last one. Basically, we have here x sub 0 and x sub n, which in our case is 8. OK. Then you need to add together f of x sub 1, 3, 5, and 7 in our case. It's all of the odd values in between that. So we have x sub 1. This is going to be x sub 2, x sub 3. So basically, x sub 3, notice 1, 3, 5, and 7 are all odd values. You're going to be adding up all those odd values and multiplying by 4. So we're going to get 4 times the sum of the odd values. So that's going to be, in our case, 2 5 halves, 13 fourths, and 13 fourths. So 2 plus 5 halves plus 13 fourths plus 13 fourths. And those are all multiplied by 4, the odd values. Then all of the even values in between, we're going to be multiplying by 2. So 2 times the even values. So even being x sub 2, x sub 4, and x sub 6. 2, 4, and 6 are all even numbers. So for those, we have 5 halves, 5 halves, and 4. So 5 halves, 5 halves, and 4. Those are all multiplied by 2. And you're just going to add all three of these together, the first and last, the odd values which are multiplied by 4, and the even values which are multiplied by 2. You take the sum of all of those, and that's going to give you your Simpson's rule approximation. When we do that, when we add all of these values together, we remember that we multiply the odd ones by 4 and the even ones by 2, and we divide the whole sum by 3. What we get is approximately 62 thirds. That's our value for A. So we're going to be plugging 62 thirds in for A here and here. Now the next thing we need to find is x times f of x, this value right here. And that's easy to do. We can just adapt what we've already done up here to find a, and we're just going to multiply each of the f of x values we plugged in by its corresponding x value. So we'll still have one third out in front here. And what we're going to do is multiply Every time we plugged in an f of x value, we're going to multiply it by the x value. So here we had 0 and 0, the first and last values for f of x. Well, we're going to multiply those by their corresponding x values. So 0 times 0 still gives us 0. And of course, 0 times 8 still gives us 0. So those two don't change. Here's where we're going to see an effect, right? We still have the 4. That's part of our Simpson's rule approximation formula. But here we got 2, which was the f of x value for x sub 1 right here, 2. Well, we're going to multiply it by its corresponding x value. 2 times 1 still gives us 2. But x sub 3, the next odd value, 5 halves times 3 will this time give us 15 halves. So instead of 5 halves, we have 15 halves. Then for x sub 5, we have 13 fourths times 5, which is going to give us 65 fourths instead of 13 fourths. And then for x sub 7, 13 fourths times 7, we're going to get 91 fourths. So 91 fourths there. Then the values we multiply by 2, the even values, that's x sub 2, which is 5 halves. We multiply that by 2, and we just get 5. x sub 4, 5 halves times 4, is going to give us 20 halves, which is 10. x sub 6, 4 times 6 gives us 24. 
So remember that was just taking every f of x value and multiplying it by x, which we did because we need to find up here x times f of x. So we add all those up, we multiply by 4 and 2, we divide by 3, and what we get is approximately 76.08, and remember that's going to be x f of x. So we'll plug that in later. Then the last thing that we need to do is find this value here, 1 half times f of x squared. So this is, again, we'll use Simpson's rule. This is going to be s of 8. Because we have this 1 half out in front here, instead of pulling it through this entire Simpson's rule approximation formula and multiplying each one by 1 half in here, we can just pull that out in front, factor it out. 1 third times 1 half is 1 sixth. So let's bring 1 sixth out in front here. And then we just have to deal with f of x squared inside. So again, this time, instead of just the f of x value, and instead of multiplying f of x times x, this time we're just going to square the f of x value. So first and last values, 0 and 0, you square them, you still get 0. Then you take your odd values, 1, 3, 5, and 7. You're going to multiply those by 4. Now we have 2 squared is 4, so 4 plus 5 halves squared is going to give us 25 fourths, so 25 fourths. 13 fourths squared is going to give us 169 over 16, so 169 over 16. And then for x sub 7, 13 fourths squared again, again 169 over 16. And then the values we're going to be multiplying by 2, the even values, x sub 2, 4, and 6. 5 halves squared again gives us 25 fourths. We already calculated that. Then for x sub 4, again, 5 halves, square it, 25 fourths. And then x sub 6, 4 squared is 16. So we plug those in like that. We take the sum here, we multiply by 4 and 2, we divide everything by 6, and we get approximately 30.42, which remember is 1 half times f of x squared. And we're going to be plugging that into our formula. So now that we have these three values, finding the centroid is really easy. We're going to call the centroid the coordinate point here x, y, and we're just going to plug in our values. So we said that the value of x times f of x we got here, 76.08, so 76.08. Then our value for a, which was 62 thirds, we'll put that in there. The value we got for 1 half times f of x squared was 30.42, so we have 30.42 divided by the value again for a, 62 thirds. So that's our centroid there. When we do the math on our calculator, what we get is a value for x of approximately 3.68 and a value for y of approximately 1.47. So this is just the coordinate point of the centroid and that's how you use Simpson's rule approximation to find the centroid of the plane region. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, like this video down below and subscribe to be notified of future videos.